welcome to the Berea Podcast. This is Troy. And this is Della. With the new year, we thought it would be great if we focused on new beginnings and changes. So today we have a very special guest with us. Right, Mike Hogg, a Berea feature for over 14 years, right? Yes, Uh, yes. Good to be with you all. So I want to know a little bit about Mike, though, before we get into all of his wisdom. Mike, did you grow up in Berea? Um, I did not grow up in Berea. Actually, I was born in Middletown, Ohio, and my parents divorced when I was young and moved to Letcher County in eastern Kentucky, where um, I really grew up, and that's where I'm from, even though my birth certificate doesn't say that. So I um, lived in eastern Kentucky in the Letcher County area till I graduated from high school and went to Eastern Kentucky University and um, graduated, started teaching around, and came to Berea in the summer of 2000 and worked as director of district-wide services in the central office, and then seven years as principal of Berea Elementary School, and then seven years as superintendent of Berea Community School. So a long and windy road. So about I, 18 years. Um, yeah, about yeah, 18 about 18 years, 17 and a half years yeah. in the public school system. Yeah, so, yeah, so. But you have other family here also? No. I've seen the ho- so you're not related to the other hogs that are here then? For 17 and a half years, I have gotten that very question. <laughs> um, That's I, what we're here for, I, I, I just do, to ask that question. Yeah, I don't have any appliances for sale. I have no carpet for sale, and I have no houses for rent, um, <laughs> despite many inquiries and uh, trying to convince people to the contrary, that I am not of that hog clan. Although, interestingly enough, Mr. Ed Hogg, who worked for Berea College, was actually originally from the same part of Letcher County that my great-grandfather, Hogg, was from. So somewhere back in that tree, I'm sure that we are related, like eighth cousins or something like that. Yeah, so I suspect um, so. Yeah. Spe- yeah, Really, how many hogs could there be in Letcher County that would not be related, right? Um, I, there are a lot of jokes that have been made about the family <laughs> tree not forking. Um, I don't think those are completely inaccurate. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's a long story, but I don't, I don't know any other hogs. So yeah. Okay. Very good. So you've been around Berea forever. What's the thing that you love the most about living here? Oh, wow. That's, that's a really tough question. Um, I, I really love this quirky community and the diversity that's here. Um, you know, I love the way that when we moved here 17 and a half years ago, there were folks in the community who embraced us. And, um, you know, we've always felt comfortable here. And so um, I, I guess it's the people uh, more than anything else that mm-hmm. I would say that I've really grown to love. And um, one of the things about leaving Berea Community School was um, leaving a lot of good people. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, one of the uh, great things about this new position is uh, meeting new people and um, getting to know some folks that I kind of knew a little bit. Um, and now, you know, more friends to be made. So, yeah. So that's the big change you've made, right? So you went from being the superintendent to now you have a new, totally new position. You retired like from the school system completely. So I am completely retired from public school education in the state of Kentucky. And after 27 plus years of, of work as a teacher and school administrator and things. And so, um, now I work in a leadership position with the partners for education program at Berea college. Um, working with students and families and communities to um, it's a place-based approach, if you will, and trying to um, give folks the skills to uh, access opportunity in, uh, in their home community. So um, it's uh, truly a cradle to career. We work in early childhood all the way through um, young people who are in college. So, um, um, and being one of those Eastern Kentucky kids, um, it's pretty exciting to get to be, a part of that, uh, um, a lot of uh, who I am was paid forward by other people, and so now it's my responsibility to help uh, pay forward for others, if you will. So, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I'm very fortunate to get to continue good work. So, yeah, I've got a, I've got a question about the Partners for Education piece in general. Yeah. I hear about it a lot in the news, and actually received a, a larger federal grant recently. So, yeah. congratulations on that. Well, thank you. Um, wh- so, like, if I lived in Letcher County. Mm-hmm. How would Partners for Education, housed here at Berea College in Berea, how would it impact my life as a student, you know, in Eastern Kentucky? Oh, great question. So um, let's say you were at Letcher County Central High School, um, okay. just as an example. Um, we have folks who support high school students, ranging everything from instructional support to study skills support, um, to helping them transition to college. 
Um, so that but, means a, a tutor, but yeah, you're yeah, a tutor yeah. there or a, like an intensive guidance counselor position. E- exactly. And okay. um, we have a lot of those folks who are providing supports to kids who are also working with families. And so, um, you know, if you're a first generation college student and you may not know about the FAFSA, the financial aid form that you must fill out in order to be considered for financial aid. So working with families and kids and really helping them to learn to advocate for themselves um, and becoming aware. So um, that's what it would look like in Letcher County and in other parts, depending on the grant. Um, It could be um, over in Clay County, um, a bus that serves the rural area, um, a traveling bookmobile, if you will, providing um, early childhood education, and we, we call two-gen uh, support. So we have young mothers and fathers, and um, they're two-year-old and um, introducing literacy skills and the love of reading at an early age. And, um, yeah, not very many two-year-olds can read, but being read to and having questions asked about the book and things like that. So depending on where you are in eastern Kentucky, it looks uh, it looks different. So um, it could be professional development that is being provided for teachers High quality um, would be expensive, maybe for a small school district. Sure. But when we work as a collaborative, we can bring in some um, pretty highfalutin folks, and um, um, by working cooperatively, offer that professional development that sometimes small districts can't do by themselves. Um, when you, it has a lot of different faces to it mm-hmm. um, in terms of uh, partner for Ed's um, programming in those places. So. Right. What about numbers, though? How many kids have been serviced recently? Well, I happen to have gotten that number today. Over, <laughs> oh, over look at you presses. doing that yeah, job. Yeah, yeah I told you. you. Drinking from a fire hose, but learning to gulp. Um, so over 36,000 young people have been served in eastern Kentucky um, through Partners for Ed programming um, in the years that's been in place. So, um, you know, it's it's um, we, we have um, a lot of supports for a lot of families and a lot of kids in a lot of places. And so what, what we reflect and what we're committed to is the college's um, eighth commitment, which is service to our region and supporting the families, um, young people, and communities in our region. So, um, you know, we're operationalizing that great eighth commitment um, to the Appalachian community. Okay. I think it's just great that you've gone from one part of education to the next step for education or a related field. But what, when you decided to retire from the school system, were you looking in your, you know, your windshield saying, hey, that's my next step? Or did you just take a leap of faith? Um, I really just took a leap of faith. And um, then this opportunity presented itself. And, um, you know, there was, there was no, I wish I could tell you there was a great plan and a grand plan. And um, if I were that kind of prophet, I might have played some numbers or bet on some horses or something. But, um, but really, it just presented itself. And, um i um, fortunate that the folks at Berea College and Partners for Ed felt like I was a good fit for mm-hmm. the position. And um, yeah, I think I, I bring that sort of a unique experience of someone who's worked their entire life in public yep. ed That's what I think. to Partners mm-hmm. for Education. And so, um, you know, I hope to be able to contribute to the good work that's already occurred and, and grow it a little bit, contribute a little bit um, and things. But it's a real blessing for me to get to continue in the work that I think is just absolutely critical. I, I would argue it's the most important work in the in the world is, Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, supporting young people and helping them access opportunity. So. So it sounds like this opportunity with Partners for Aid is awesome, but I serve on the SPDM. I did for elementary and middle school. So I I know that you are uh, particularly fond of the school system. I know that you were really dedicated. So what are some things that you really loved about uh, all of your roles there, from principal to superintendent, and things you think you'll miss. Parent of a student. Parent of a student. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you have a lot, uh, of, a lot yeah. of touches. So, so um, the the thing that I'll, I will miss the most, and it's it's sort of a long term view, is really getting to see kiddos come to us as three and four year olds and being there long enough to watch them walk across the stage as yeah. seniors in high school and young people who have you know they've come dependent and they leave independent and. Um, so being around kids and watching them grow and seeing a first grader who's fidgety or whatever, and everyone's sure this is the student is going to be trouble down the road when they get to middle school. And, you know, this, this kid, kiddo blossoms and um, they're um, growing and, you know, they're doing what kids do, which is you know, learning stuff. And some of that stuff is math and science and reading. And some of it is how do you get along with others? And so I will really miss that long view of watching people grow and and having some small part in 
know, um, that aspect of their lives. But um, I, I will miss that um, a lot. Um, kids are just fantastic. And anybody that wants to talk about how the youth of today are, you know, desperately corrupt more so than any other generation, I was going to say, these are the most giving people in the world. They will, you know, I, my time at Berea Community School was anytime there was a natural disaster or something in our community, the kids were the first ones to come together and say, what can we do to support this family? Or what can we do to support, you know, what the earthquake in Haiti or what, you know, and so um, I just think kids are, are amazing and they have such a, a giving spirit. And and coupled with that is a, is a staff um, that supports that and encourages that type of behavior and um and says well sure we can we can do dimes for haiti or yeah let's take up uh, how many ramen noodles can we get for the food bank or whatever so you know really the relationships the relationships with kids the relationships with the grown-ups who just have this incredible commitment and there are so many times that i've seen um staff members and parents i will say as well but who just quietly gave um, and who were really an inspiration to me to go, wow, I need to be better. I need to to do more. Mm-hmm. Just so, so, so being in that atmosphere, that Berea cocoon and bubble, if you will, um, I, I'll miss all of it. There's not, I, I, there is one part I won't miss. Um, I won't miss days like today when <laughs> there was ice going to be moving in. And um, our daughter was so excited that there was ice coming that she was, she did not sleep last night. I heard her up all through the night, checking through the blinds in her room. She came in at 5.30 this morning. Did you get a text yet? I'm like, not yet, sweetie. I don't even think it started raining or anything yet. And so then we got the water main and that. And so she was so, I mean, so I remember happy. middle school. She was so happy to not have to go today. Well, I always, I always thought, would you rather trade a gray, cold day in January for a May day? And for me, I always wanted the May Day, but, you know, it's the whole excitement. It was, and an it was off the, after the break. Day. Oh, it was after, yeah. you know, because yeah. we hadn't even <laughs> been back to school yet. It's like, that's just one extra day. It makes it longer. So I will say, I, I slept very, very well for the first time on the even 14 or 15 years than the, uh, uh, when inclement weather was coming. I had no problem sleeping last night. So, so. How, tell us how that works, though. So I am actually very engaged. Now, my daughter says that you drive the roads. She says, oh, no, no, the superintendent has to drive the roads to see if they're safe. And I'm like, really? I did not know that. Is that true? How does that work? Um, So the way that uh, Matt Woods, who was the transportation director, and I, our plan was to divide town in half. And he took uh, Mary Street uh, out that end of town, uh, Dogwood. And I took um, Lorraine Court and Forest and um, Peach Bloom Hill, and we drove, and then we came back together about 5.15 in front of the central office, and then we go inside, and we check the radar and say, hey, do we think we can safely get kids to school, and can our staff um, get safely to school, and the kids who drive, can they safely get to school, and um, is our parking lot clear, <laughs> and are our sidewalks clear? <laughs> so um, if the answer to any of those was no, then we cancel school. Okay. And so um, the issue was always about safety, always about safety, always yeah. about safety. Because one of the things we never wanted to do was say, well, we need to go visit a student in the hospital because... Yeah. And things. So, um, yeah. We but a day like that. today would be more complex oh, because the weather's coming in kind of late. So then you're like, what if I get them to school and they have to get home and... Days, oh. days like today are, are the nightmare days because there's no easy call. And, you yeah. know, you go, well, I don't know why they didn't have school today. And, of course, everyone was going, oh, it's going to be an ice storm. It's going well, to be everybody storm. was. We were watching. Yeah. I yeah. predicted last night. I said, oh, no, you're not going to have school tomorrow. Yeah. That's what I told her. You're not going to have school tomorrow. They're predicting <laughs> ice at least a quarter of an inch or something. It's going to start right as the commute is coming the in. The ground and- is frozen, and all of this is going yeah. to turn to an ice sheet and things. Yeah. So um, it, it is it – is, on, on the one hand, it's one of the most difficult decisions to make. And on the other hand, it's a very easy decision to make in that, you know, if we're talking about compromising safety and, and I know Dr. Hatchett and Matt feel the same way, I mean, we're just not going to do it. We can yeah. make this day up, um, but um, we're not going to endanger our students, endanger our staff. And the thing about Berea Community School is you have a lot of students who are out of district students. So their parents are transporting mm-hmm. them in and things. So, you know, it makes it difficult because you're up all night and you're worried about it and you're setting two alarms to make sure you don't sleep through. Because one of my nightmares was <laughs> that I would I would wake up at 540 and I would go out there and be four inches of snow and go, uh-oh, there's trouble now. I never so, even thought of that. So, what yeah. if I slept through my alarm and yeah, now oh, we I'd, got like... I'd set two alarms. I'd set yeah. two alarms. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, 
So what do you see as sort of the big things on the horizon for the school? What should what should parents and community members and stakeholders, what should we be thinking about? Like, these are the big decisions that will need to be made, or these are big changes and that are schools coming. schools in general? And like schools, education. schools, education, school. or the school. So, so uh, what I would say, um, Nella, this is a legislative session right now, and the governor's uh, proposed budget, I think, is going to hit education and other social services pretty hard. So I really think one of the most important immediate things that um, citizens, parents, uh, community members should be doing is advocating for schools and not those cuts that are going to come, whether that's um, changes to the Kentucky teachers uh, pension system. That's one thing, um, but there are going to be other cuts and that are that are going to be proposed. And so um, what I would recommend immediately is to contact your legislators and let them know um, this is the place that we cannot go. We cannot go. Um, public education, even though um, um, there are some politicians who will say that public education has been spared, it has not been spared in any way whatsoever. They're programming under what's called the Lars Align item that have been cut over and over and over. Um, and, and, and another example of an area that's been cut over and over that does such great work in our schools is the Family Resource Centers. Right. I'm really advocating um, um, with your legislators. So that's that's an immediate thing that I would say is going to be very timely in the next, um, next bit. So that would be one thing um, that I would say that's a place where folks need to step in and really be a voice for their public schools. You know, sometimes our local election, elected officials – We'll go, well, we're hearing from teachers. Well, of course, they want to preserve their salaries, blah, 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 blah. But, um, you know, th- those are elected folks. And to hear from parents who are saying it- it's unacceptable and unconscionable that we would talk about reducing services to preschool children, um, that we're talking about re- reducing services to our fam- uh, uh, support of our family resource centers who are serving our most vulnerable population of students. So that is an immediate thing that I think that folks can do to really step in um, and um, have their voices be heard. Um, read, reading to your kids every night, asking them how they're doing on their homework, what's going on at school. Sometimes you'll get nothing, but if you'll ask a specific question, well, what about um, uh, Miss So and So's class? What's going on in there? Then you'll find that you'll engage in the conversation. But you know, continue the dialogue with your kids about um, education and about goals and goal setting and. Um, and thinking big thoughts. Um, so those are some, I guess, some thoughts about um, how folks can step in and advocate for their schools and their kids. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And and actually, part of Berea will have a special election. Marie Rader resigned her position um, as a state legislator, state representative. And so a big part of Berea will be um, electing a state representative. So hopefully jump in the race and be a strong candidate and be an advocate uh, in Frankfurt. We need those people um, representing our kids. That's good. So what kind of advice have you given Dr. Hatchett about the position other than set two alarms <laughs> on potential snow days? Um, you know, um, so she is um, has a lot of experience in education, is very bright and energetic and passionate. Um, so um, a lot of my advice was you have a really, really great team of educators around you. You have a strong leadership team as to um, um, uh, listen, you know, seek first to understand kind of Covey's principles there. Um, but to, but to bring yourself and, um, and know that my cog is not sitting at McDonald's second guessing your decision about having school today. Um, so, um, or about any other decision that you make and things, but, but, but just to be herself and to bring her own, um, leadership ability and her own beliefs about education to Berea community school. It's a great place to serve. And, um, you know, the other piece of advice is um, that I gave her was that a piece of advice that was given to me sort of as a joke, which was you need to prepare three envelopes and put them in your desk drawer. And the first catastrophe, pull out the, it says catastrophe number one on the front of it. And the solution is to blame the previous superintendent. (laughs) Get away with that. And then the second uh, issue, catastrophe, whatever, pull out the uh, second envelope, open it up and blame the school board. And uh, when you get to the third one, um, the directions say prepare three letters for the next superintendent uh, because you're on your way out. Um, so, um, oh, no. but, but yeah, so yeah, once you blame the board, you're in trouble. So anyway, it's, it's a, a, a superintendent joke that, you know, you blame the previous superintendent, then blame the school board and then uh, go look for another job because yeah. you're, you're yeah, on your way funny. out. So, but, but she's, funny. she, she is 
um, I think she'll be an exceptional yeah. leader. So. We met her at, at the, um, I open think there was house, a little yeah. open house with her. They had a little welcoming thing yeah. for her. So we met her there. So we're, we're pretty excited too. Yeah. So, but we will miss you. We well, will thank you, you very so. much. And we're going to have her on the show as well. So oh, yeah. uh, super, yes. super, super. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, I, I certainly will miss Brick Community School and the people and the parents and the community. It's just been a, a fantastic experience. And, and one thing I would share is, is I always appreciate how much um, the community loved our family and things and took care of, you know, took my kiddos in and, you know, it was like, right. um, for my kids, this is their hometown. And, um, so, um, uh, it's kind of nice. Last night I was Skyping my older daughter who's almost 23 and lives in New York and uh, Binghamton. And, um, she said, I, I really want to, I really want to come back to Berea when I, you know, want to settle down and be back in Berea. And I thought, yeah. yeah. What, what's she doing? What's she doing in New York? What's she her? is, um, she is a youth advocate at, um, the high school there in Binghamton, about a 2,000 student inner city um, school with tremendous diversity. And she works with ninth graders and is working to help them um, prepare to be eligible for college or to, to make them make that transition. A lot of her students are first generation immigrant students. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, yeah, yeah, she's, she's working with uh, and doing good work. And she, one thing she said to me, she says, dad, one of us hogs has to be in public education, so <laughs> oh. you know, she's she's doing it now. That's so good. so um, yeah, yeah, it's good yeah, work. That's good really work. Good. Good, good. So we talked about the school. We talked about partners for education. Yeah. What about something broader? It is the first of the year. So what about New Year's resolutions? Do you make resolutions? And did you make any this year? I, I resolve to not make resolutions. <laughs> um, so, no, actually, I have. Um, I ate a little too much between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and uh, so I, I resolved to change my eating habits. And um, you and the rest of the world, also, well, the country well, at least. I, I really gave up something big, though. <laughs> so what I gave up was sugar in my coffee. <laughs> oh, Holy no. cow. I'm a two I'm, packer. I am uh, oh. a two little packs for every cup of coffee. Della, so. I'm like six. Oh, <laughs> so, oh my so my kids tell me my my uh, coffee tasted like um, coffee flavored ice cream. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it was really, really good. And I really enjoyed a half a pot every day of of sugar, really. And um, so I gave up sugar in my coffee, wow. which is, yeah, so I've, I'm, I'm on day day seven, eight, something like that. And, and I'm actually learning to like coffee without sugar. Oh, we'll I see. Can't. Yeah, I like coffee, but I like it with sugar and I cream. Like it a lot. Oh, yeah, that would be the half and half. <laughs> oh, I mean, half and half. For, for good. Um, so so I, I'm just a real believer that, that, you know, every day is a chance to make a difference, to make someone smile, to to um to be at the end of the day when somebody says hey honey how was your day and it says oh well this guy on the streets it was kind of all jolly and things so um i'm i'm a pretty um hopeful positive kind of person so um you know i just you know be, be somebody else's light carry your own weather you know mm -hmm. um you know make someone smile you know you never know what they're going through when you pass them on the sidewalk on campus right. whether it's a college student or a it's a second grader or a teacher mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be, but, you know, be, be a little bit of light. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully it pays forward and you know, like that commercial where somebody does something for somebody who does something for somebody. So, mm -hmm. um, just resolving to do a little bit more of that good stuff, um, and, and not navel gaze too much. So, right. that's a, yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a good tip. So good. no sugar in the coffee and to be the light, be a little bit of light. <laughs> those are be very, at least, those are really, <laughs> Each end of the spectrum, right? Yeah. It's like a very basic <laughs> primal, no sugar, do you know? And I really like sugar. So. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I really like sugar. So Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I would have trouble giving that up. You've been doing a little, uh, I'm right. pointing to you as in Troy, You've been doing a little, we won't call it dieting, lifestyle change. Lifestyle change. Lifestyle I went changes. to a doctor recently and they said, your life right now has two potential trajectories. You're either going to go down the left path and you'll continue with the sugar in your coffee and the sugar mm -hmm. on your cake and the sugar, mm -hmm. sugar, sugar, <laughs> and that will have certain health consequences and your consequences will be coming to you soon. Mm -hmm. Or you can change, you know, what, what your intake is and do, you know, exercises and, you know, more so. And you will have a different outcome from that. So that was the doctor that I've, I've just got the bill for that visit today. And that's tough to, to <laughs> A, hear, and B, pay, to pay for. Pay, pay someone else wow. to tell you that. <laughs> I knew that already. <laughs> right. So I've, I've got to do the same thing. I don't have sugar in my coffee for that. And 
you know, I, I view it kind of like a mel a melding of the two things that you said that every day is, and I don't resolve for 2018. I resolve for today for right now. So yeah. like my morning coffee, I'm not putting sugar in that cup. Right. And, but I think something more importantly in that second cup, if I accidentally slip and put sugar in or eat half a pie for breakfast, not that that happened. <laughs> Uh, so you're cutting back from a whole piece of pie to a half pie. It's, it's, no, it's, it's just one piece. It's just, exactly. <laughs> it's just when I look down and half the pie is gone. Because uh, it's fruit, though. That was a blueberry pie. Well, when it's all in there, still in the whole round thing, I know you're calling that one piece, but it's not pieces until you divide it out. Oh, so, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, you know, that's still an opportunity to for the next day or the next bite is an, an opportunity for another resolution. So it's it's a series of sprints rather than the whole marathon, because you, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You don't, you know, it's, it's one bite at a time. Yeah. So that, I that, don't think people really tip. eat elephants though. I'm, I'm joking. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the person that choked on one actually, just, just, just to get a visual there. That's it. All right, here we go. So let's bring this to a close. Uh, thank you so much for listening. What I'll suggest is if you want to contact Della for show ideas for 2018 or to reach out for anything, her email address is Della at the com. My email address is Troy at the com. Mike, how can people contact you? You can contact me on my email at mike.hog at berea.edu. Okay, so M-I-K-E dot the period H-O-G-G at berea.edu. That's me. What I'll say is go to the com slash Mike Hogg. What we'll do is have some resources there where it's a link to PFE, you know, so that people can learn more. Also have a link to the Berea Independent School Board, you know, to learn learn about that. And uh, also about the legislative session. We'll have some links there where people can, you know, find their legislator and call. That would that would be a great thing to do. Be a very great thing to do. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. So until next week. Bye. Today is why I stay